be intervened upon. Uh, so this is a Raw Studios panel, is that right? Yep. All right. Hey, Heather. Hello. All right. Great. How are you? Looking good. I like their hair. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You do that. Somebody does that for you, right? I do. You do it yourself? Yes, sir. Is it a vegetable, though? Yes, it is. It's a special effect. Does it wash out? Uh, over time. How long? Uh, about two months. Right on. Where, where, where do you get that stuff? Uh, I order it online. Online? What's it called? Special effects. Special effects? Yes. Hair dye? Yes. Special effects. Okay. Welcome to the Q&A. <laughs> 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 now, I'm going to write this down. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Yeah, I mean, ridiculous, you know. 
We have an origin story of fucking Jigsaw in the Punisher movie. <laughs> and uh, and then there was the um, we have to uh, the world has to be in peril, so there's got to be like some virus in a suitcase to play around, destroy New York City. Um, each script got worse than the last because you know and this is a, a lesson to the studios that. Uh, they seem to have to learn over and over again. You want to hire, you know, they, they wanted the script cheap. So they hired cheap writers to do a draft. But it would suck. So then they'd hire another cheap writer. And they hire another cheap writer. Then they hire another cheap writer, you know. Instead of paying a guy like Todd Farmer a half a million bucks up front, go write the script. They paid six guys, 75 or 100 grand a piece, to write a shitty script one after the other. They thought they wanted it cheap, right? Well, guess what? They ended up spending more money on six or seven terrible writers than they would have been just hired Todd Farmer for half a million bucks. It's, that's the kind of thinking that, that, that gets them in trouble. Um, we finally got a great writer. I don't know his name was going to be Stuart Beatty. They finally honed it up. Got a Stuart Beatty. Stuart Beatty wrote five pages. It was excellent. And then he quit to go um, direct his own movie in his hometown in Australia. Oh, which is great. You know, he's like, this is my opportunity to direct a movie and I'm going to take it. So here's the five pages that I wrote over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> which, which were the best that I think that I've read. And I thought we finally had a script, but then he quit. So, uh, so that led me to Walter Hill. Um, I called up Walter Hill and I said, you know, this is the movie we're doing this thing. We don't have a script. And he said, well, I'll, I'll write the fucking script. I'll send my job. You know, okay, this is the guy who wrote The Getaway. You know, the guy who wrote Alien. Okay, and Aliens. Walter Hill. Yes. 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 Quality, you know, we're a small company, but we want to do 
quality is. And we want to we want to make the best looking and the best stories uh, out there. We want to make the best looking books that we, that we can make. So, and Greg, you know, those are the artists that we hire, guys who are cut above the rest. And uh, and Greg, you know, the, the book's fantastic. We're actually going to do a small print run of Beth Land number seven for San Diego. That uh, Tim Bradstreet and James Daly did the cover for, and uh, Greg Staples uh, did the interiors, and it looks so gorgeous. It looks so gorgeous. We're going to do most of it in black and white, so we can just see the pencil and the ink work that Greg did, and then a few few color pages. But it's uh, for comic book nerds, and we're going to put it out for San Diego. And it's a gorgeous looking book. That's just to just to have a meeting. <clears throat> what else do we got? Okay, one of my special issue is kind of a rarity. And it's just to show our family that's supporting us that we haven't forgot about them. We're trying to get stuff out, but occasionally shit happens. Like your artist leaves. Shit's not happening. Yeah, the artist leaves. But you know, we're just putting out the book on our own time. I'm not. I'm not up to any deadline. I don't feel the uh, need to put out material every year. I put it out when it's ready. Um, you know, and and I'm not, I don't want to have. You know, uh, I so I'd love it if we sold thirty thousand copies of the comic, but that's not why I'm doing it. You know. I actually think it's kind of cool that we have to do a small print run because, you know, your grandkids are going to pay a lot of money for <laughs> one of those one of those comic books. You know, if people are still collecting paper, <laughs> but you know, but uh, which I think they probably will. But anyway, we're we're doing it because we love it. We, you know, we don't have we have day jobs, so we're not doing it really to make money. And we're doing it because we believe in this kind of work that. That we haven't seen, you know, since we were we were kids. And looking around in the market, we don't see um, really really great horror anthology series or a really great epic science fiction story in the vein of heavy metal or weird science or weird science fantasy. We just don't see that stuff, you know. And that's the kind of stuff that really turned me on. You know, I'm, I didn't I don't like superheroes. Uh, I like Western anything really, but a superhero. I like crime comics, Western comics, uh, science fiction comics, horror comics. I mean, those and the underground stuff. The underground stuff. We have the individual artists like Robert Crumb or you know one of these guys, or Kip Deitch, um, who are just doing these amazing, you know, visionary stuff. Um, and, and that's the kind of stuff that. Inspires us, you know. We hired uh, Thomas Ott to uh, do a graphic novel adaptation of Dark Country. So we've got uh, the movie Dark Country that Tim and I did is very much inspired by the work of Thomas Ott. And now I called Thomas and I said, you know, here's this movie I did. Would you like to do the adaptation? He said yes, but I don't want to see the movie. I'm just going to do my own adaptation. I'll watch the movie when I'm done. I thought that was awesome. You know, because now we get to see um, Thomas Ott's version of, of, of a film that was inspired by Thomas Ott. <laughs> really. Uh, so that's uh, in the pipeline. Um, we've got a werewolf book called The Lichen that's in the pipeline um, that Mike Carey, also a, a Brit, is writing. Um, and, uh, and But my, our favorite thing that we have going on is the Devil's Commandos that, that Todd is doing and that Tim is. Tim created this just incredible story. Um, uh, well, I want to talk to you about that Bernie Wrightson had a really cool idea, which might be interesting. I want to talk to you guys about But But uh, you guys want to tell us about Devil's Commandos? Yeah. Well, you know, let me, let me start out just real quick and then I want to hand it over to Todd. But, um, just, just so you guys kind of have a clear picture of the one night, you know, the Punisher is obviously now far off on the horizon, and you know, looking for kind of those kind of things for Tom to do as an actor, because he loves the character so much. But finding, you know, kind of that adventure, kind of uh, action, kind of hero, but a smart kind of thing too. And uh, one night I kind of sat down with him and just made a list of one through five, and I was going to come up with a concept for five different, like, vehicles for Tom J. I was like, what could I get to? And I started out with, hmm, Tom should play Sergeant Rock, but we don't own Sergeant Rock. <laughs> so what if, um, if 
it's a World War II thing. Tom plays leader of these commandos. And then it just kind of grew from there. And I started to make this list of five different things. And they stopped after the first one and never stopped. You know, for like three days, I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And corrected and corrected. And I'm sure Todd laughed when he saw my outline because it goes between narrative to dialogue to, I mean, it's just, uh, I'm no writer. I'm just, right out. I'm just an imagination. I see all of people coming to me saying, hey, let's, let's, I have an idea for a movie. He sent one and I was like, this is a movie. The problem was if I adapted it word for word, it would be 17 hours long. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing was, there was so much good stuff in there. I could take the best of this stuff, put it together, and it, it creates an incredible story. And then we all talked about it. There's, we, we sort of took it to another level with some ideas that we had. So it's a uh, you know, oh, way different level. Um, world War II horror movie. And it's the Pacific Theater, too, which, you know, when you think of horror in World War II, you know, obviously you think Nazis, you know. And I was like, you know what, we've seen that, you know, but we really haven't seen that in the Pacific Theater. And so that was kind of the reason I went there. But, um, yeah, and, and it was a great collaboration, too, because Todd, the screenwriter, like I said, I'm not a writer, but it's been wonderfully collaborative because, you know, he asked me questions. And he, you know, we work little problems out, or he gets stuck. You know, we kind of skull session about it. So it's been, you know, a wonderful thing to work with a guy like Todd. Uh, You're a good uh, uh, bounce, bounce board. Yeah, all those bounce board, sounding board, good sounding board. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and that's been fabulous. And, and and every time Todd kind of comes up with a problem solved, that you know, it just blows my mind. Wow, how does this get any yeah. better? And you love when you start with him, and it just keeps getting better. And that happens when you bring in people of like minds with creativity that don't exactly think like you, but you're all on the same wavelength. And so we're very excited, and this isn't an infancy, this is still in the screenplay form. And yeah. it's original. It's not based on a movie, it's not based on another movie, it's not a remake, it's not a reboot, it's an original idea that he had, and it's a little... Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do the graphic novel of the, of the, uh, the thing, the, the world, I mean, the, Oh, it's a wonderful. Did you guys? Do you guys have any movies that you both referenced uh, for as inspiration for uh, for? Because you know you don't see a lot of World War II slash horror films. They're out there, but you, there's not a lot of them. And uh, this one seems you know is treated really you know it's very much a, a war movie. Uh, I think it would be a, a great war movie if you took out the uh, supernatural element. Uh, uh, to it. Um, so, are, are there any, any movies that you both sort of watched or batted back and forth between the two of you as, as inspiration? You came in with you came in with them. Yeah, I had, I had some things in my, on my mind, but like I kept on time. It's like combat meets the Twilight Zone. So I was thinking like you know, real, real base, blazing combat, annual fuller kind of like or combat, the movie, co combat the old TV, TV show. Yeah, and and so you follow me group of guys you need to know around. And, um, and that, you know, Tom's playing Dick Morrow but, and, and Sergeant Rock, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but, but more than that, it was, uh, you know, things, and I, I don't want to, I can't say what I'm, because it kind of might give something away, but the idea of it was that it was just very much that. It's, it's taking something that's very real that you've seen before, that you understand, you can, you can um, grasp the idea of, like, saving Private Ryan and following the squad of guys around very believable, rooted in reality, and then throwing it on its side or its ass or, you know, flipping it over 180 degrees and then introducing this completely different element into that. And then and I think that makes the, the suspension of disbelief, the fantasy of it, that much more uh, accessible. Um, so you know I mean, when you take a group of guys who are normal guys, everyday guys, you put them in a situation that's extraordinary. And Keith, Stephen King's always great. I mean, he didn't miss. He takes a bunch of people in the grocery store. Yeah. yeah. Puts them into an extraordinary situation. So, we do that with the one. Yeah. It's all combat. What's the other one you mentioned? Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Yeah. But uh, are there any other war movies that you guys. Band of Brothers, as far as the miniseries, yeah. the next one, miniseries, the yeah. other Band of Brothers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, you were checking that out, right? Yeah. You yeah. watched Band of Brothers, and I watched Pacific for the same reason. Pacific is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
But it's well, a completely different war there, and it's in, in bless their hearts for what they had to go through. But I mean, there, there, and there are heroes there, but you see genuine heroics in, in the uh, European adventure. But we can put that in what we've got. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah, just the uh, just the way they shot it, and, and the way that you know they they made it, you know. Yeah, really yeah. try to run. Yeah. That's what we want to do, brothers. Just, I find a lot of horror movies and zombie movies and stuff, they don't look real, you know, like when you watch them, the quality of the cinematography, it doesn't look like a real gutsy movie, and that always pisses me off, you know, because it's like, you should be shooting the movie like it's a drum, you know, don't shoot it like with garish lighting and, and strange colored gels on your lights, you know, shoot it like it's real, you know. Those are the scariest movies: The Exorcist, Alien. I mean, those movies you believe, and it's just—it's such a simple lesson. And I don't understand why people keep breaking that. It's a very simple uh, uh, rule, you know. But, you know, of course, not every movie. Some movies work really well as sort of larger than life. Uh, they know what they're—they know what they are. The ones that are looking for an identity that right. turn to a gimmick. That, that I guess so. Anybody got questions? Walking Dead is great. Yeah. Oh, there's a couple. There's, you know, uh, The Shining. Right? It's based on a comic, it, but it's not a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a beat in the script recently, and you, you called them and you were like, oh, you can't use that as long as you That's that's aggravating when you come up with something kind of cool. And then You're right. right. And then, and then oh, yeah. Yeah. Darabon did it, and they're like, yeah. Uh, you take it from me. Ideas are floating out there, you know. They're they're not ours, and they're not the people who came up with them. They they're out there, you know. You stumble upon them. They're, 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 we don't create them. I don't. I don't think. I think we find them, stumble upon them. Like the sculptor who said, "I find the sculpt the sculpture inside the stone is there." Is done covering. Everything leads to something. And, and mm -hmm. if you got some, like one of your things, that you're like, oh, we've got this really great set piece and now we can't use it well, you have to then think, you know, how can we do this? But, you know, and so it forces you to. It's like some, you know, guys like John Carpenter were making movies like Escape from New York back in the late 70s. They didn't have any money. They had to think of ways. They had to work really hard to come up with a way to do it that no one was going to pay, you know. Quarter million dollars for the effect sequence. They had to solve problems. That makes a better story because when you've got All money, when you've got money to throw at a problem. The problem gets solved basically cheaply intellectually. But when you don't have the money, you have to sit down and you've got to think of the problem. Why did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Cool. The mother of invention. Part of the process that's very much missing today from uh, from any kind of studio film. So we've got the. Uh, that's not true. You know, there's studio movies that succeed. You know, every now and then. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, you know, those guys actually do a good job every now and then. Yeah. Well, I guess it's we like the independent world, uh, we, we just, you know, because it's, it affords you more, more freedom. And you don't have uh, too many people leaning over your shoulder. You know. So Raw Studios is created as an independent uh, entertainment company, and we do inter independent comics and uh, films. Um, and that's what, you know, Gets me out of bed in the morning. Anybody else got a question? Yeah. Now you scratch it. Here. Yes. I'm, I'm very glad that I didn't do Jonah Hex. Um, <laughs> you know, I have to say that the, the script that I had read is not the script that they ended up doing. And the director that I wanted to work with is not the people that ended up doing the film. So the actual film is a completely different creation. So don't imagine Thomas Jane in that role, in that movie, because that's not the movie that I was excited about. Um, it's just not the script and not the director. They changed everything when they went with uh, Brolin. And I read a quote that he said, I, you know, he was obviously trying to be funny, but they, he said, I was looking for the worst material out there uh, to do. And I thought it was a strange quote. <laughs> but he, he found it. 
Good for him. <laughs> Anybody got? I was wondering uh, with you about um, Halloween and Hellraiser. Are you attached to those? Or? Yeah, Hellraiser is uh, we're, we're writing it now. Uh, Halloween, we finished uh, we finished the script in, in 2010. We didn't have time to, to shoot that before we did Drive Angry. So uh, the plan, if all goes well, is we'll do uh, Hellraiser first and hopefully slide right into Halloween. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> I love that I will repay my bills with remakes and sequels and that sort of thing. <laughs> but what I want to do is sell some commandos, and I find myself impatient to yeah. get back on it. Yeah. Because it's original yeah. and something that you guys have never seen before. Yeah, when you own it, you know, it's a bar, so you get not read it. Yeah. And that's exciting. It's independent. Nobody's reading it. It's juicy, but no one's paying us right now. So those those paying us bills have to come first. Yeah, but, that, but that will fit it, you know, that is the, the money, you know, that, that, because it, as an owner, you know, you get to, you actually participate in the profits of the film, so, you know, in a way, that, that should be the, the lead horse, because it's the one that, that is going to um, uh, pay the you know, pay the bill, take care of us for a while. Uh, Beth, what about that one? What? Oh, a movie about that line. I, I, I think that maybe, you know, when we finish uh, the series, when we write the second half of the series, then you have a whole complete story that the first six issues sort of end on a cliffhanger and set us up for the second half. But I don't know. You know, once we fin- I, I think it would make a great film once we uh, complete the story. Um, but it's, it's huge. I mean, uh, James Cameron would have to get interested in it. It's not like a budget. Yeah, but, you know, it would make a great movie. Yeah, that's true. It would, make, it would make a great movie. And one, when we finish the script and get it all as a complete story, I wouldn't be surprised if people got interested in that way. But that's not why we created it. I didn't create that planet to make a comic in order to make a movie, which a lot of people do. Um, you know, we, we, and, you know, it's not, we don't have anything against our stuff being turned into movies. The Alien Big Farm that Todd Farmer created uh, is, uh, is uh, being, being shocked at the movie right now with David Gordon Green, who directed Pineapple Express, some great movies. Uh, uh, he loves this thing, and it's worth the process of trying to shop it around. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really. Nobody, uh, no, wait, no, I'm surprised, I mean, Redneck versus Aliens, I mean, that's just fantastic, you know, and David, and David Green understands that, but I'm surprised we haven't gotten more attention in the financing world, you know, because to me it's, it's a no-brainer, it's funny as hell. Don't treat those books like Aliens and Big Farm 3000, and it's definitely unique, it'll be good as well, and uh, why it's ours. Have any of you read Aliens Big Farm 3000, if you know the book at all, anybody, don't be don't think feel bad if nobody has. We want to introduce you to it. Because it's awesome. Yeah. The pitch is very simple. Okay. The pitch is very simple. It's basically we know what happens when aliens attack the White House. We know what happens when aliens attack Sigourney Weaver. This is what happens when aliens attack Kentucky Moonshine. Kids your sister Yeah. Yeah. We didn't create the comics in order to make the movies. We created the comics because they make good comics, you know, and really fun, really, you know, uh, elevated, you know, the alien worlds that we're working on, and all the stuff that we're working on. We just think it makes great comics, and that one makes a great comic. You know, it would make a hell of an expensive movie. I, I don't think it will really ever happen in my lifetime, but, but maybe, you know, that's what's neat about creating material and laying it out there. You know, in 40 or 50 years, somebody could discover this and go, my God, this is brilliant, you know, and great which, which, which happens, right? Yeah, yeah. When, when people find stuff that was created in the 30s and 40s and say, this would be fantastic, let's turn it into a film. So, maybe someday. Yeah, somebody is interested in making it a video game. Wasn't it Red Fly Studios? Wasn't it Red Fly? Yeah, Red, make Red Fly. Oh, what happened to that one? Uh, we did, they disappeared. They yeah. off the they must have gotten a big job from it, but they were working with us on, on yeah. uh, building, on building a video game. Which we, need to get, we, need to, we need to flop the horse. Right. <laughs> and 
ਬਣਿਆ